This is a really weird thing that I stole from a producer of a Silverstein album. By itself though, it sounds weird. And you're gonna wonder how on earth that sounds good in the mix. Let me show you. This is how to mix pop punk, where we're taking this old mix. And turning it into this new one. And in this video, we're focusing on the bass in particular. So we've been through guitars, we've been through drums. So let's take a look at bass. So this is the raw DI, which is actually programmed with punk bass, which is this bass instrument here from Submission Audio. And that sounds like this. So first thing that I did was compress that DI. And that's not really a level control too much as the way I programmed the MIDI was quite consistent. This is more for vibe. So we've got a slow attack here, fastest release, four to one ratio. And if you want to grab these multi-tracks and follow along with the mix, then you can grab them for a small fee from my Shopify. The link is below and it's also available through YouTube shopping. So adding the compressor makes the DI sound like this. So a slight volume jump, but mostly you can hear the attack coming out there and it brings the bass forward. Typically in a real world environment, I would record bass through a compressor like an 1176 to try and make the waveform as much of a sausage as I could before I actually started mixing anyway. Then next, one of my favorite bass plugins is Parallax. What we've got here is I've cranked up the low compression quite a lot. If you've ever watched bass mixing tutorials, you'll always see how they'll either split the bass and limit the the low end or get a multi-band compressor and compress the low end heavily. That's effectively what this is doing here. So we're compressing everything below 174 hertz. The mid distortion is off. If it was metal, I would have the mid distortion on, have a much more dirty tone. But here I quite like the clean top end in pop punk. And a tiny little boost here at 500 hertz as that's where I'd cut around guitars. So I like to push it in bass to sort of slot that in together. That's what this sounds like. So a nice clanky top end to the bass and then a gritty distorted low end. So that's the bass tone. So next up, some EQ. This isn't typical for how I mix bass, but you'll see that we've got some more processing on the bass bus to come. So this is more just shaping this tone before I start to roll off the low end and do those kinds of things. So we've got 2K cut here. That's for that sort of razor blade pick attack that can happen. It can be quite aggressive and harsh sounding. And that can build up with the guitars and stuff in that frequency range. And we've got some low mud at 325 hertz. So here at 159, it's a dynamic cut as that frequency will jump on certain notes. So I want to keep the low end even and consistent. So that's why that is a dynamic one. And we've got some of the sort of honkiness of the bass that's not nice. And then a general 500 boost again to fill in that gap between the bass and guitars. Let's go through these one by one. You can hear that whistling sound there and you heard on certain notes it got bigger. So that's why we've got this dynamic part of it here too. So they sound like wind down a hallway, which I'll often describe in the mid range cuts I do in guitars. So cutting them out will give you a more defined bass. And then we've got this mud cut here at 325. And that's just junk that you don't need. So let's AB this EQ off and on. So I'm just cleaning that up. Hopefully you heard that it didn't change the character and the tone too much. It just cleaned it up and brought it into focus a bit better. Now we've got a compressor again, but this one is just gonna take what we've got and push it forward and get aggressive. So that then gets that tone, makes it really even. Slightly slower attack than before to really get some of that pick attack out. And we cleaned it up with the EQ before with that 2K cut. So now we can bring that attack out and it's a much nicer sounding attack. And then finally, some EQ with the SSL channel. Rolled off 
everything above 5k with the whole mix you don't really need much up there with bass in this genre these curves are gentle so you will get some but you won't be sort of conflicting with the 8k boosts in the guitars and stuff if you watch those videos before you'll see that i like to boost in 8k and then roll off everything under 50 hertz again really gentle curve on this anyway then we have a very slight three quarters of a decibel boost at 1.4k because that's where the presence of the bass comes out the sort of clinky string noise between one and one and a half k and then another small boost nearly two decibels at 100 hertz and that is a shelf so that's that's boosting everything from 100 hertz down so let's a b this eq So bringing up the low end a bit and hopefully you heard bringing out that sort of string noise bit just ever so slightly. And when that's in with the guitars, that makes a big difference in making the bass heard and giving it a space. And just quickly, if you make music like this and you want me to mix your next song, then head over to my website, terrybeckleyrecording.com. Contact me via the contact form and I will get back to you. Okay, so we have these two other bass tracks, but they are for different sections of the song and everything goes to this bass bus here. So if we look across, we've got this bass wide track here that comes in for the choruses. This is a really weird thing that I stole from a producer of a Silverstein album and it really brings the choruses out and um, it's like a stereo effect on the bass obviously only above a certain frequency range I'm not making the low end stereo and it really gels with the guitars nicely by itself though it sounds weird and you're going to wonder how on earth that sounds good in the mix let me show you and well, you might disagree but for me I thought it was quite cool It's pretty subtle, but if you listen to the guitars, you should hear them sort of flesh out a little bit. Let's hear the guitars and the bass together. So obviously I brought the level up there to exaggerate it, but you'll notice sometimes when you're mixing when it hits, when the chorus hits and you're missing something, you know, some people like to run bass through the guitar amp at that point, but I actually prefer this as it's a bit of a softer approach. So I'll show you what that effect is. So the first two plugins, the compressor's the same as the main bass track. And Parallax, I've actually used the extreme fuzz preset that you get with this. And that is compression is whacked up, everything below 200 hertz, but we're gonna EQ after this anyway mid distortion off, high distortion is on and quite high. So that's where the fuzz comes from. And then this, this EQ is a bit crazy, but I don't think I touched it that much from the actual preset. The low shelf up, the mud at 200 down, 500, pretty much the same as the 500 in the main bass parallax. Then a massive whack up at that sort of string noise frequency, pull down the sort of more grindy one and a bit of presence. So this is what it sounds like before we put any of the weird effects on. So pure bass fuzz, and it sounds cool, right? Like a cool effecty bass tone. And then this is the weird thing, which is the real ADT, which gives it like a chorusing effect and a stereo effect. But that makes it sound like this. It ain't nice, but it's cool. After that, then we EQ, we run, roll off all the low end. That says 110 hertz, but really the low end starts to slope down at 700 and then a cut around 4k because that fuzz can build up there and then we bring in some of that top end down as well and then as we're blending two tones then we have the in phase from waves the phase is flipped and pushed back by 2.47 milliseconds because we don't want a, any phase issues here so with this bass wide effect exaggerated let's hear it off and on against the main bass Now I'll bring it down to the level that it was sitting in in the mix. So 
So hopefully you can see the purpose that that serves. And because we've got two bass tracks now, that's why we do run them to a bass bus. On the bass bus, we have some tube saturation to give it that analog feel. If you watch the guitar videos, you'll know that I did that with the guitars too and some of the drums. And then into the C4 multiband compressor like I was talking about earlier. So these two bands are off. We're controlling the muddy area of the sort of 100 to 250 hertz bit. Now whack, this is the... Um, threshold we've whacked it all the way down so we can really control that so nothing gets too muddy and then we're compressing the bass and gaining it up by four and a half decibels so what i'll do once my mastering chain is in i'll then push as much low end as i can into it before it starts to ruin the mix so i can get as much low end in as possible and still keep it loud and aggressive and not lose the brightness and not eat up any of the mix with the low end so let's listen to those two plugins off and on see what they're doing just some subtle saturation there to give it an analog feel like it's going through a desk or a preamp and now the multiband so you probably heard that 200 hertz area jump up when i meet when i bypass that we're controlling that so we can get more sub and sort of low end power in it and then some eq just some more controlling of that 2k razor bladey sound there's no boost on there 0.02 this is just dynamic so it only catches it at its worst spots so it's only those really whistly parts that it pulls down on and then into a limiter because it's bass we want to pin it in place Yeah, so only catching those notes that jump out. And then right at the end here, where we have the heavy sort of chuggy part, this is just a copy. I cut this up and copied it over. And this is just to make the ending heavier. So same compressor as before. And then we have the dark glass pedal. For those of you who know about the BOD pedal, it's very similar to that. So you could just grab the free one, BOD from TSE Audio. So I've pulled the bass down. I've pulled the low mids down because we've still got the main bass track running at this point. So this is just for extra distortion. This is typically what I would do if it was a more of a metal song. High mids pushed, treble low down, and the drive up quite high. If it sounds like this. I'll bring the level up. It's like heavy bass distortion, basically. Then some EQ. <laughs> This is a copy over of the main EQ with some extra bits on top. So you can probably recognize some of the ones from the main EQ there. But then we've also pulled back the low end quite dramatically and pulled back this 4K cut here. So it doesn't cause extra fizz with the guitars and everything when that's in. And then again, a compressor like, like before. That's pretty much the same as the main bass track. SSL channel. So here we've rolled the top end off all the way up to 3K. Because we've already got that sort of presence from the main bass. This is just a really like heavy up the the mid-range of the bass. Same boost here, 1.4. And although this won't be in action, this is obviously where I've copy and pasted this over from the main one. But this, this low end won't be that important as we have rolled off. We pulled the bass back and the low mids back on the dark glass pedal. And then in phase again, because it's running alongside the main bass. Let's hear that ending. <laughs> So I'll mute that grip bass track and bring it back in. See, it brings that heaviness of the uh, climax of the song. It really brings it forward. So what you haven't really heard of the vocals, that'll be in the next video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Grab the multi-tracks on my Shopify if you want to follow along. You can check out other bass videos or other vocal mixing videos from my channel. I'll link some in the description. So until next time, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at the next one.